Hello everyone. Welcome back to Pixel Village and I am Radha Krishnan. Ever since photography was invented way back sometime in the past, one thing that really got people's fascination was portraiture. Right from a commoner, probably in the beginning it was only the royalty and the real noble ones and the rich ones would go and get a portraiture done but subsequently it became democratized and almost everyone will want to. It almost became a household ritual to go and get a portrait done from the photographer. I remember my encounters with uh, the portrait photographer as young children, me and my brothers. Uh, we had a couple of occasions where, you know, we were taken to the portrait studio and, you know, you see this man, he had a, I remember that he had a slightly serious uh, kind of look. Uh, occasionally, he would disappear into a black cloth in front of a, uh, you know, kind of a wooden box and he would ask us to stay still and, you know, well, all, you know, all that rituals that, uh, you know goes along with a portrait photography in those days. World over photography was almost a culture. Through images you could actually figure out a lot of things besides looking at a beautiful portrait. Well talking about portraiture and culture and all that it's another session altogether but what we're going to talk about is portraits. Now India too had a great portrait culture. But towards the end of the 70s and during the beginning of 80s, things started changing. Probably the first round of democratization of photography happened by the advent of color rolls. The 36 frame color rolls actually changed the whole scenario. Cameras became more affordable, more portable and photography became more popular. All you have to do is to take the roll to the friendly neighborhood uh, color lab. While you have a tea, he will process it, give you the prints. Everything became so easy and cost effective. And the portrait photographer died a natural death. Along with him died the portraiture culture too. Well, now what you have is in case if you want to shoot a family portrait, you can go to your friendly neighborhood uh, studio, take a picture, you know how it's taken, a typical two light situation, umbrella on both lights and they give you a picture. That's story number one. Story number two is majority of photographers these days are wedding photographers and event photographers and videographers. While that's completely okay, they all have lots of free time between two events or two weddings. Now, how do you make use of that free time? They all have invested already into equipment. So that is problem number two. First is a photographer who's probably doing below par kind of portraiture, one. Second is a photographer who's capable but lots of free time in their hand to experiment and probably earn some money too by doing photography. Problem number three is space. Well, we have a billion and a plus people in this country and place is at a premium. What we're going to do today is to demonstrate to you how to shoot a great portraiture in a small studio. So, the first photographer who was doing presumably below par portraiture, one. Second is this photographer who is already equipped but have lots of free time. And third, someone who has actually is struggling to, you know, find space to do photography. So, this is a solution for all of them. You want to know what it's about? It's about a compact portrait studio and how to set up and shoot in one. So obviously as in any portraiture, we need light, we need camera, we need a background, we need space. So what we're going to show to you today is how to do that in a 10 feet by 12 feet kind of space. We have slightly larger studio, but what we're going to do is to, we're going to mark a 10 feet by 12 feet space and we're going to work within it. Then I'll introduce to you the kind of equipments that we're going to use. And of course, we'll take some pictures and you see whether 
it's practical and it's worth considering. Let me get into marking the studio first. 10 feet by 12 feet. Okay, Aditya, let's get down, mark the space. Ten by twelve, and we've also used uh, an eight by four poly board uh, just to you know mark that area, and it will also act as reflectors. Uh, if you don't have it, don't worry. You can still use those small uh, three by two poly boards that are locally available as reflectors. Now the light, the light that we're going to use is from Godox. We use Godox here yeah. and it's the SK402 kit. The kit comes with two lights, two soft boxes and two reflectors. And of course, it's got a universal uh, trigger too. Let's set it up a usual way. Okay. lights, two soft boxes on a stand. Of course, you need to get a good pair of stands. Don't save costs there. But these lights are very sturdy, very stable and very cost effective. Uh, let me show these lights to you. Both are 400 watts. Flashlights works only in mains power. And uh, what else? It works with a, a radio trigger and also can be worked in sync with other flashes. If you're using other flashes in combination, you can also work using the uh, photo cell here. So very simple and very straightforward flash. We use it uh, very regularly in our studio and we are very happy with it. So let me keep the light to the side and introduce the next uh, equipment to you. So what do we need next? obviously a camera. We're going to be using the Fuji X-T3 with the 1855 kit lens. Now, after the recent price cut, this combination has become really attractively priced. Uh, Fuji X-T3 is uh, Fuji's flagship currently at this point uh, in their APS-C camera range. And uh, we've been using it for quite some time. We have a couple of uh, uh, you know, Fuji's in our studio, X-T3, extremely uh, high quality, uh, no compromise lens. You can also consider using the X-T30, which is the little brother of the X-T3, uh, with the same lens, of course. That too, if you're on a budget, otherwise X-T3 is preferred, but X-T30 is more or less equally powerful in terms of performance, resolution, video capabilities, everything. But for this kind of a studio setup, X-T3, X-T30, both will do the job. 1655 is the lens that we are recommending. What do we need next? A backdrop. Now, this is a homemade backdrop. The way you can make it is you look for royalty-free images, you know, random images like this. You will get these small patches in the internet pick them, use Photoshop, diagonally enlarge them and print them on vinyl on the wrong side of vinyl. See, vinyl has two sides. One is a glossy side and one is a matte finished side. So get it printed on the matte side of the vinyl and uh, you will get a very cost effective backdrop like this, which you can use and reuse 
the one which we've got printed is about nine feet wide i think it's a little over nine feet and that's what we've been using we've shot a lot of uh, portraits in in this backdrop uh, okay so now we need a model so aditya can you volunteer today as our model and uh, let's take a look at it So, uh, though we have uh, two lights today, I'm going to be using only one light. We're going to shoot the famous single light portraiture, one light portraiture. So, thank you, uh, Aditya. Uh, we'll, we'll finish it yeah. very fast because we will keep another session for two light, uh, you know, kind of photography. Uh, not that it's very difficult, but it's a little time consuming. So, we're going to stick with one light photography so let me like i said it's a universal um, remote uh, no ttls because you're inside the studio because of the same reason i'm going to measure the light uh, using a seconic it's one of the most cost effective yet very very uh, effective cost effective and very very effective i like that uh, a flash meter from uh, uh, Seaconic. It's called the L308X. Uh, I'm going to take precise reading. I'm not going to be guessing what the flash output is going to be uh, because flash works a little different from the way available li light works. Uh, I want to get the right exposure. I want to get the right kind of uh, light falling on the backdrop and the face as well. So I'm going to be measuring the light. I'll show you how it is done very soon. We also have another video done on uh, how to use a flash meter. I'll link it up here in the description somewhere. Uh, you must go and check that out. So we have a light. So we have a set of uh, flash. We have a very good quality camera. So whenever I say quality, I'm going to be recommending something which is also very cost effective, okay? Because we're not talking about large size studios and a photographer has got tons of money disposable uh, with him. It's a tight, small studio, hence the budget also is limited. So my rough calculation says that you can do this with all the equipments, probably under 200,000 Indian rupees and you will still have some change with you. So, okay, so that's one. So let me put the second light out so that you know how the place is let me keep it away now the most popular single light technique is called the Rembrandt lighting okay I'll show you how Rembrandt lighting is done once it is done it's so simple but yet effective that you'll not forget it. it's very easy to do it you have only one light and one subject uh, so let's do that let me set it up let me show it to you uh, how to do that okay so to be able to do that, there is something called a modeling lamp in the uh, flash. Anyone who's used the flash, studio flash, know that there is something called modeling lamp inside. So you need to switch that on first. Let me keep it in full power. All right. Okay, Aditya, I am going to request you to hold this for a second. And uh, can you reduce the working lights a little bit so that I, you know, the viewers can see the modeling lamp? Reduce it a little bit. Further, further, further. That's right, perfect. Now I can see the light. Okay, let me explain what a Rembrandt is. Rembrandt basically is a light that the famous painter Rembrandt used to uh, use. Uh, light coming through a large light source, most probably a window. And the, he would paint in that one light source. Uh, so the light, this is a soft box, which is also called a window light. And the light that is coming through two layers of diffusion hits uh, the subject on one side and also creates a small triangular patch. Now it's kind of a little filled up because of our working light. I need to keep it because otherwise you will not see me. Uh, so this is what we are trying to get. So let me reposition the light a little. and. Okay, so we are inside. Come closer. Yeah, that's it. Okay, stand there. 
right okay now that basically is rumbra this fill light is like i told you is because of the you know uh, the ambient light and the reflection from the wall uh now what we need to do is to read the intensity of this light for which i am going to use a flash meter now fortunately this light the sk402 can be triggered using uh, the universal trigger so i can increase or decrease the power of the flash uh, uh, do all functions remotely from the trigger itself it's not new almost all flashes these days have it but i thought i'll just mention that okay so let's let me measure i am working with uh, 160 iso which is the base iso of this uh, camera i want to get about f4 to work with now like i said in the beginning don't trust your eyes uh, you know when you work with flash uh, remember to watch our video on flash meter okay so let me switch it on right this is 562 now let me reduce the power fire one so that it em empties its capacitors 56 i think it's uh, really powerful so i cannot get anything smaller than 56 here at uh, yeah 56 at 160 the only option is to shift it a little back but i don't want the light to spread more so i'm going to stay like this i'm going to work with 56 step back a little please little 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 okay ready now 56 okay that's the reading to the left yeah little and chin down a little more i'm going to shoot a little loose i'm going to make sure that i'm going to stay inside the uh, boundary line and ready look into the camera nice that's very nice okay so i'm going to also do a full length just to show you that full length also is possible so we are working with an 1855 and effectively 18 is like 24 55 is about what just around about 80 uh, mm so i think at about 50 mm which is which is 35 here i'll get a full length So what is left? You can do two people in this very comfortably. Uh, you know, accommodate two people. You can do close-ups. You can do mid shots. You can also do those typical passport shots. Uh, you know, bring in those those lights. Go by the you know the requirement of a passport picture. Remove the backdrop. Uh, we have painted the backdrop as white, so you can use white. Drop a black, and you get black. very compact uh so you don't really need a big studio to create it all depends on how cleverly uh, you use the light that'll create that drama but uh, there are times when less is more one light minimal uh you know get up minimal background and you tend to create an interesting picture where the personality comes through That's exactly what people used to do in those days. They had black and white. Um, they didn't have too much of, you know, styling stuff and all involved in it. it the personality, the relationship. Uh, imagine if it was a family. The husband, wife, children relation was coming through the portrait. Not. It was not about the clothes that they wore or how fashionable they are. a family portraiture or an individual portraiture has to be about the personality the relationship his lifestyle all that we have been shooting that kind of uh, images a lot in the studio we will share those images with you now What I personally would love to see is 
that portrait culture which this country always had coming back in a major way. Now technology is available. You don't require those uh, big, you know, heavy setup which are expensive uh, and required a lot of technological understanding too. It's not required now. You can actually see what you have shot. These equipments are available even in the smallest towns of the country. They are not expensive. They are cheaper than uh, probably a bike to own and maintain. The only difference is bike is an expense, but this is a profession. You can also go to pixelvillage.com and watch our small studio series done by Neil Bose and you see how he has used a space which is he used even a smaller space to create amazing fashion shoots. If you like the trailers, you can subscribe and watch them too. Well, that's it. Bye for now. <laughs>